Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, what I want to share with you today, this is absolutely huge. Yesterday in my video, I discussed um, how Benjamin Netanyahu, as we know, is Prime Minister of Israel again, and there's a new government that was just formed in Israel. And I kind of connected the dots on how uh, Netanyahu becoming Prime Minister again and this new government that was just formed, how this is actually pushing us closer to the fulfillment of certain biblical prophecies. It's pushing us closer to the coming war against the nation of Israel, and it is pushing us closer to the eventual and future uh, rebuilding of the coming third temple. And then I discussed uh, Ben Gavir's visit to the Temple Mount and the possible major implications that are coming from that. And then I just came across this this morning. You can't make this stuff up, folks. This is just in from the JewishPress.com. Temple Mount Movement is asking Ben Kavir to hold a Passover sacrifice on April 5th. And then this just in from Israel 365 News. Temple Mount activists petition Ben Kavir to permit Passover sacrifice. Let me read some of this to you and pay very close attention to what I'm going to read to you. In the wake of National Security Minister Ben Kavir ascending to the Temple Mount Tuesday, just yesterday, the Return to the Mount, the Return to the Mount activist group petitioned the minister to permit the biblical Passover offering at the Temple Mount. Uh, just so you folks know, the Returning to the Mount group makes this request every year. They do. But Ben Kavir, who ascended the Temple Mount just yesterday, is no normal police minister, and they stand a better chance than ever before to get permission to perform the controversial annual sacrifice ritual. Raphael Morris, the head of the Return to the Mount, told Israel 365 News that there is actually strong grassroots for reinstating the Passover offering on the Temple Mount. This is what he said. We have lots of people, private and even in the government, that support this. Remember, we have a new government in Israel. We, and Ben Kavir, we see what he's doing, and we have this new government that will support this. And then Morris said, there's no reason why we shouldn't do it, referring to the Passover sacrifice this year on April 5th on the Temple Mount. Morris said that if, if given okay by the government, everything is in place to, to jumpstart the biblical ritual. Here's what you have to remember, folks. Ben Gavir did so much when he did not have power in his hands, and today he has those powers. We see what he, what he just did in terms of uh, going to the Temple Mount yesterday and what that the pot that's being stirred right now with that. The green light detonation, detonation button is in his hands. Then later on in the article, check this one out. We have now a golden opportunity to return our old glory and renew the Passover sacrifice for the first time in some 2,000 years, a move that will surely hasten our redemption and be written in the pages of history as the start of the construction of our third temple. Folks, I want you to think of something. If we just saw the response to when Ben Kavir went to the Temple Mount yesterday and the threats from Hamas, Hezbollah, Jordan, uh, other surrounding enemies of Israel, how they said there's going to be a harsh response, this would be a declaration of war against Israel if Ben Kavir uh, visited the Temple Mount yesterday, which he did. And now we see this uh, Temple Mount group called the Return to the Mount, petitioning the uh, biblical Passover offering at the Temple Mount. And we know they make this request every year, but it doesn't work to no avail. But Ben Kavir, who ascended the Temple Mount yesterday, 
Again, he is no normal police minister. And they stand a better chance than ever before to get permission to perform the controversial annual sacrifice ritual at the Temple Mount. Imagine on April 5th, if, if Ben Kavir allows us, what that's going to cause. If a war doesn't come against Israel before then from Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, Jordan, the other surrounding enemies of Israel, imagine what that's going to stir. Again, anything having to do with Israel, Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount, I pay very close attention to, folks, and look at everything that's happening right now regarding the Temple Mount. And now we have this. Again, to reiterate this quote here, we now have a golden opportunity to return our old glory and renew the Passover sacrifice for the first time in some 2,000 years, a move that will surely hasten our redemption and be written in the pages of history as the start of the construction of our third temple. This is huge and this is amazing, folks. We continue to see everything moving in the direction the Bible said that it would, uh, that it will happen. Uh, we're heading full speed to a coming war against the nation of Israel. We're heading full speed toward the Daniel 9.27 covenant. Uh, and we're heading full speed to the eventual rebuilding of the coming third temple. Amazing things we're watching right now, folks. And all I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now and you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive, and Jesus is coming back, and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking, and it is sinking fast, just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. He loves you. He loves you so much, and he demonstrates his love for you for what he did for you on the cross. In Romans 5, 8, we read, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The reality is Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.